goes. I'm assuming it goes recording in progress. Oh, it made me small. I want to be big. And if I disappear, will you get bigger? Let's see. I don't need any backgrounds or anything. None. Maybe there's another view. I think you could pin my video. There yeah. should be, yeah. If, and then it, it should make my video the biggest. Let me see. Pin. I'm looking for the word pin. Record reaction apps. Start mute participants. Uh, there's normally like three little dots, kind of like where the raised hand Got feature it. would be. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, I'm on my phone, so I'm kind of winging it here. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So I can't see you guys, um, but you can chime in verbally if something isn't functioning correctly, like you can't see me. Uh, so basically what I'm going to do, it's going to be just slightly less follow along, and it's just going to be more instructive a little bit more instructional plus a little bit follow along, but to really help build the Qigong. And I, I probably won't do too much of the Tai Chi today, but eventually that will start to fit into things. So when we look at the bridge system, the bridge system has four layers and starting soon, the delivery system for the very beginning is ego. And then as we go along in the system, I start to introduce other things. I don't typically plan to introduce too many formal practices into warrior training. But since this group is all well beyond that, it's kind of time to uh, establish some of our formal practice. So to begin, of course, I'm sitting in a very particular way. And I call it now imperial posture rather than emperors or empress. That way we're not, uh, yeah, not binary with it, I guess. So. Imperial posture, just like I did in 2017. I'm not really using the back of the chair on my sit bones. My chest is not concave. It's not uh, the opposite of concave. Uh, it's square. So square chest, shoulders are relaxed, elbows slightly behind me, and hands on my thighs. Uh, you can't really see my feet, although I can back up because, yeah. So my feet are about shoulder width apart. They're both facing forward and everything is perpendicular. So I have a nice 90 degree angle between uh, legs and thighs. Is this oh, all going to be sense? done on a chair? Sorry, is this all going to be done on a chair? Nope, not at all. Do I need to go and get a chair? I do. Nope. No, not really, because I'm about to get up. <laughs> so by the okay. time you get, yeah, by, by the time you get the chair, I'll be you, you'll be back and I'll be standing. But I'm just emphasizing the imperial posture, just because in a a one on one session, I'll start sitting like this. Probably in most of our sessions, when we do a little bit more follow along, I'll start sitting like this. So one of the key points that we'll be doing. And I don't know, you probably can't hear the music because of my headphones, but we want to stimulate senses. We want to establish our four directions of attention. The first direction, so I'm gonna have some people in this room physically later. I have a candle, I have music. And so, and then I'll kind of instruct a little bit of what I mean by peripheral vision, defocused vision. So that's all one direction of attention. Uh, if a person's a, a very, uh, new beginner, then I'll be directing attention into the body for them. You guys are a little bit more familiar with this process, so you're going to be able to establish points of attention internally. When we do the following along, of course, that will combine the breath with the movement, and now we have breath as our third direction of attention. Something that I've just 100% bought into, I just 100% decided to do it this way, is that the fourth direction of attention will be imagination. 
So we're just going to superimpose imagination as we're doing our practice. So those are some of the key points to keep in mind. If it was a one-on-one -on -one session, I would ask a little bit about things that you're experiencing, any trigger point type of pain going on. Since this is a group setting, if anything, if you do have a trigger point area, like your shoulder isn't functioning correctly, uh, maybe, I don't know, knees hurt or something like that, then we modify it with less range of motion. So, you know, when we're doing our 18 gates warm up, if for some reason your shoulder isn't functioning well or your neck doesn't feel well, then we just make it a smaller circle or with the shoulder rotation or the arm rotations, we just make them smaller circles or just don't do it. So we're not gonna ever try to force ourselves through any type of pain or anything like that. All that makes sense? Okay, so I'm gonna do this for about 30 minutes and then I may, I don't know, I think this is working out pretty good. So I may not switch the time. I might just go ahead and keep it on Sundays. I was a little concerned with practice, yes. The music's on in here. No, but with my headphones, it will cancel. Typically, it tries to cancel outside noises out. It's not. No, I have the music on. Yeah, so uh, somebody who's here live or in person, they'll get the auditory uh, stimulation as well. You may have to do that on your own. Same with like incense or a candle or, uh, I don't know, a, a Glade plug-in, although I don't think those are too good for you. All right, are we ready? So I'm just gonna do a reminder of the 18 gates. If you're starting to create a formal practice, I recommend the 18 gates three times a day. You don't have to do as many rotations you, if you are crunched for time, but if you do it when you first wake up, and I, I mean, almost literally as soon as you get out of bed, uh, probably after the bathroom break or you know the, the morning bathroom routine, but as soon as you can in the morning, go into your 18 gate warm up, and then you don't have to do anything else. But uh, if we do at least the 18 gates, then we're going to create space in all of our joints so that the energy can move. And that's the bottom line. That's what we're looking to do with this is we're looking to help align the physical body because we've been working really well with the mind. So Throughout the day, the mind is more relaxed, energy is moving more freely, we're getting out of our own way, and we can feel a lot of peace. However, we still have to have physical alignment, otherwise the body and the mind, they're still kind of doing a tug of war. So the emperor's posture is one of the best ways to sit in alignment. It does look a little bit weird to other people sometimes because poor posture is common. And Sometimes poor posture is even cool. Um, as you guys can imagine, I don't give a shit about any of that. I sit the way that I sit because I care about my body, I care about how I feel, and that's more important than most other things. Okay, so with 18 gates, we start with the wrists, and we're just doing gentle wrist rotations. And it doesn't matter which direction you go, it doesn't matter which arm you do first, it doesn't have to be the same as me, but you just want to do the opposite rotation and then the opposite arm because you do both arms, right? So whichever one you start with, then you just go to the other one. And so just gentle wrist rotations, depends on how vigorous you feel, you can speed it up a little bit. My shoulders are relaxed, elbows are relaxed and down, and I'm just doing my rotations of the wrist. Typically when I do my wrist rotations, I also just like to stretch out my hands. So I do a closed fist and a little bit of tension and then let the fingers out. So this is kind of including our finger joints, which may seem new, but there's actually a lot of layers to the 18 gates I've never shared just because we just never got to it. Okay, so we've done wrists and we've done our fingers and then we're gonna go into our arm swings. I don't know what they call this, but I like to start with arm swing in front of the body. Again, it doesn't matter which arm you start with and it doesn't matter which direction you rotate, but when it, we change directions, just go the opposite direction. I have one hand over 
uh, I'm going to use acupuncture points. So the more that you study this, the more that you do this with me, the more familiar you become with the acupuncture points, but this is the middle dantian. You can call it CV17. So I have one hand over CV17 because I'm just keeping myself square and balanced while I do this. And, and obviously I'm going now behind the body, kind of like I'm swimming in air. And I'm not doing as many rotations as I would do normally because I, I want to make sure I get through some of this material in the 30 minutes. Always good to do a little shakeout too. I learned that from Kim Eng with her yin yoga. Shake it out. Okay, and then we'll do the other arm. And I think I can hear the microphone kind of, that's okay. Though. Same thing, not gonna do a bunch of these, that way I can move on, because you get the idea. And it should still be somewhat refreshing if you haven't done this today, it should still feel all right. Now we're gonna bring our elbows together. We're gonna use our, uh, our practice to kind of open up the elbow joint. We've got our wrists. We did kind of skip to our shoulders, but uh, that's just the way that I was taught. I don't think it really matters what order you do things in. So we're gonna trace a circle. Remember, we're kind of tracing a circle around uh, like the breast area and the abdominal area. We kind of trace a circle and our elbows come together and we're still tracing that circle. You can see I'm kind of tracing a circle on either side of my body. And you can do this in two different directions, but you don't really have to because you can reverse the direction and that's just good for balance, but it's not completely required. Okay, does that make sense? All right, next we're gonna open up the chest and also includes the shoulders, elbows. So all of that is kind of being opened with this one, but we kind of start in our genie position and then the elbows come back, palms face up, and open the chest and then we reverse it, palms facing down and we kind of pinch the elbows a little bit behind us. So you can see I've kind of pinched my elbows. Do that again, opens up the chest, comes back and pinches the elbows. Okay. And then we'll do more of a conventional shoulder rotation. The way that I do shoulder rotations is by focusing on the hand and I don't, I don't want to bend my elbow, otherwise the shoulder won't move. So I keep my elbow not locked, nothing is ever really locked, but I keep it more straight. I don't wanna bend it too much. And then I'm just circling the hand. So if I focus on the hand, the shoulder and the elbow just follow suit. And then of course you change directions and the elbow can be slightly bent, but the, the straighter it is without being locked, the more it engages the shoulder and you get a nice rotation. And I'm just tracing around my pants or leg. And we'll do the other one. And you can always use the other hand, CV17, CV6, which is the lower Dantian. You can do either one. Just whichever, whichever feels best. And now shoulder rotation. In the future, I will get earbuds that won't, you know, because I can hear it kind of going up against my shirt. So hopefully that doesn't annoy you too much. Oh, I see. Okay. I try to go in front of me and see if that helps. I guess it just kind of looks silly. Nope, that doesn't help at all. I'll just get a uh, cord that's one for the wire that's one for the show rather. Okay, so we did our shoulders, we did our elbows, we did our wrists, and now we're going to do a little bit of a hip motion. Lost again. your volume. Can't hear you now. Yeah. Oh, you can't hear me at all? 
Yeah, you lost uh, your earbuds or something. Let me see, did it turn, did it mute me? I can hear you now. Oh, you can hear me now? Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know what I did. It is heating up a little bit now, Shana. So one of the reasons I didn't turn the heat on is because when we start moving in the room with the door closed, it heats up. Okay, so now we're gonna do a little bit of hip rotation. We don't have to do the Shakira, the internal one. Um, so we'll just do the bigger ones where you're just making the bigger bowl or the bigger rotation. And this is a, a lot of uh, waist as opposed to hips. So the kind of the waist is, is doing the circular motion. I'll do it from the side here as well. And I'm definitely not getting too extreme with it. Like I'm not going all the way over here. You can. So if, if you know, you're feeling more flexible today, you can definitely start to do more of a rotation. Uh, just make sure you're comfortable with it. Otherwise, excuse me. Otherwise, it starts to you could potentially uh, injure the lower back. But there can be no injury if we're just doing little circles. Okay, so that is our waist. Now we're going to warm up our knees. And I don't do the traditional Tai Chi knee because I just don't think that's good but I do warm them up just by rubbing them in circles. And the squat, I am doing my best to keep uh, the back straight. And then we go into our squatting position. You may need to step out a little bit and your toes and feet can kind of go a little bit at an angle. They don't have to, but if they do a little bit, that's probably gonna help prevent any injury. And then you just kind of go into your catcher squat. And that brings my shoulders down. And I'm still keeping my back straight. And I'm on my toes. So obviously my feet aren't flat on the ground. I don't know if I could do that. And then when you get back up, I like to put my hands on my knees and slowly rise. If you want, you can rise much quicker, but the slower you rise, the more you engage the legs. And I always put my hands over my knees because then I can make sure that I'm not doing anything strenuous with my knees. Okay, I'm gonna put my hands together and you can see that my foot, the, the ball of my foot is kind of planted into the ground while I do circles with my knees. And then that's, it's doing two things because your toes are what's engaging the ground. So you may even hear your toes crack a little bit. And it's also doing the ankle. So we're doing an ankle rotation. And you can go fast, faster if you want to, if you're more familiar with the motion. If you're less familiar with it, it's best to do it a little bit slower to avoid any type of injury with it. And then switch directions. Okay, I'll do this one. And then when we're done with ankles and toes, we go all the way back up to the top to do our neck. And then the neck is the direction of where you're looking. So I'm pointing where I'm looking and then I just rotate my neck to look. See, I'm kind of looking at the outside of the wall. And if your neck feels a little tight, then you just do smaller circles. It can help to point, that can also help but if you don't need to point, then you can just rotate your neck. And I'm following my vision, so I'm making circles with my vision. That's how I make the circles with my neck. And it's also helpful once you become square and you're facing forward to look left or whichever direction, it doesn't matter and then look the opposite direction. 
come back to center, look up. And you can open your mouth for that too, that will help. If you're keeping your mouth closed, it can feel a little tight on your neck. And then look down. And for the most part, you just want the neck doing the movement. You don't want to move your shoulders too much or the upper body. And that's the 18 gates. Any questions about the 18 gates? And of course, I'll post the recording so we can do it again and again and again on our own. But I cannot emphasize enough that the 18 gates, the more you do it, the better. Um, of course, in balance, you don't want to be doing it all darn day or that could be contraindicated. But I would recommend at least three times a day. Or if you can't do it during the day because you're working and you're doing stuff, do it throughout the day. You'll see me at front desk doing all kinds of shit. And it's from the 18 gates. And if a person walks out and I hear them, then of course I go back to normal earnest. But if somebody is kind of being sneaky, they'll catch me doing, doing different things with my body because I'm there and I'm not just going to stand the whole day. Does that make sense? Any questions, comments, or concerns about the 18 gates? We've done it many times, but yeah. if it's not a yes, question. In and, in and out of full squat is going to need a modified position, at least until later in the day. I can't get up in the morning and do a full squat and stand up and get into it with right okay, off the bat. Yeah, if you need a chair, you can have a chair beside you. That's a, a way to kind of modify it. You also don't have to go down all the way. So when we touch our knees, you can kind of just come down and go back up, kind of just come down. You see, I'm doing the squat, but I'm also not not quite doing the squat all the way down. And that could be a way to modify that. That was my only thing too, was the modification. But yeah, a chair would probably be helpful. A chair would be helpful and then not going down all the way. Okay. All right, so we'll go a little bit into the standing posture. So this is something that I will offer either in counterbalance training or in warrior training, because it's it's that essential. It's same thing with 18 gates. I could easily see myself, depending on the person, offering the 18 gates as a part of a formal practice in the counterbalance training. Some things will be warrior training or hydrostasy because it's it's more, it requires more effort, more learning, uh, and you really have to do it. Otherwise, it's just not gonna have any effect at all. Like most of the things we do, if you don't do it, it doesn't have an effect, it doesn't work. Okay, so standing uh, meditation, we begin with what I call establishing the golden line. There's all kinds of ways to look at this with traditional Chinese medicine, Tai Chi, uh, heaven, human, earth. It can get a little bit into inner alchemy with Shen, Qi, and Jing, but uh, Jin, but we won't get into too much of, of those details. So the standing meditation, uh, the feet, the toes can even be slightly in as opposed to never out. So I, the standing meditation is never with my feet like this. That, that would be not the pastoral alignment that we're looking for. This standing meditation will create internal integrity, structural alignment. We've opened up the joints. Now if we keep our joints and our body in a more correct posture, correct, but you know, allows the energy to flow and move better throughout the day. Of course, informally, any time you come to a standstill, test your buoyancy with your standing meditation. That way, I do that at every stoplight. And I don't, again, I don't care how it looks to other people, but I test my buoyancy just to make sure I'm not locking my knees and just to make sure that my body's not in some funky position because the energy won't flow well. So we have to build structural integrity. So the toes can be, the feet can be either perfectly parallel or they can be just a tiny bit with the toes going inwards. And then the weight on our feet is evenly distributed, but you can put your attention a little bit on the outside of your feet to help create that U shape in the quad. The quad is kind of this groin area where the, the leg and the upper body meet or the I guess the abdominal area. So the qua is a rounded U shape. If 
the weight is on the outside of our feet, that kind of takes care of itself a little bit, or at least the attention. Our weight doesn't have to be on the outside, but our attention is. The weight can be more evenly distributed. Does that make sense so far? So I'm creating a U shape. There's a, a little bit of space in between my knees. So you can, you can probably see the U shape from there. So that's the lower body. And they're about shoulder width. So this is hip width. This is feet together, hip width, and then just another little step out is shoulder width. Sometimes when we do Tai Chi, we'll take it out even a step further. And then that's more horse stance. And that's our Mabu, but this is just shoulder width. Okay? No depth. We're not focusing on depth one iota. That's more Zen Zhuang. This is just establishing your golden line. So there doesn't need to be any depth at all. Here we have CV6, which is the lower Dantian. And this is what's called Ming Men, is on the opposite side in the back. And I don't ever recommend the word tuck. Tucking the tailbone will be contraindicated, but we do want it to go down. So we're imagining CV6 going down. You can imagine it, you can breathe it into existence, but we're not really focusing on depth. Knees are bent. And this is, I would say more square. It's not really tucked, but it's also not anterior. So it's, I'm not pushing anything out. So it's just nice and even. Does that make sense? When we do Tai Chi, things will start to change a little bit. We'll do sitting as we're standing. I don't know where my music went, Shana. I don't know if you pressed something up there. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Not that, I guess I can hear it, so it's nice for me. Okay. So CV6, which is the lower Don Tien, Ming Men, square, knees are bent, everything feels loose and relaxed. Doesn't matter which hand, as far as I'm concerned, but one hand over the Don Tien, which is CV6. And you can see that I've set this up by touching the Ming Men with the back of my hand. And I can just feel that squareness in terms of the structure. The structure feels square. Uh, square could be another word for balanced. It's not this way and it's not this way. It's nice and even. And then my weight is evenly distributed across my foot, but I put a little extra attention on the outside of my feet. So maybe a little bit of weight goes to the outside, but I don't over accentuate that. My elbow tucks a little bit, right? So I'm not actively pulling it in, but I also don't want them to flare out. And now we can remove the hand from the Ming Men and that goes over the center of the chest, CV17. Same with my elbows. It's important to kind of bring the elbows back a little bit. Okay. And now if you can imagine, we do have that string that's kind of pulling or is elongated above the head. Something that I like to do is I just put my hand behind my head and I kind of just make sure that my neck and my head is square. So if I put my hand behind my head and I'm looking down, like I can feel that, like I know that this isn't, this isn't straight, I can feel that. If for some reason I'm looking up again, I can feel that. So I just make sure that it's nice and square. If it is square, this will make a nice angle, your arm. So it kind of makes a nice triangle. If you're down like this, then your triangle is kind of uh, messed up a little bit. So this can help you get into the proper neck alignment. If you really want to get fancy, you can put your hands as if you're holding your skull. See? And then you can let the weight drop down while keeping the head in place. And then that gives the effect of everything below the neck is going downward. Does that make sense? One hand over the Dantian, lower, one hand over upper Dantian. And this is the beginning of establishing the golden line. So for breathing with this, 
we have what's called three chambers breathing. So the breath, of course, begins in the belly. And as we inhale, you'll also feel the breath start to fill towards your upper hand until you also feel the chest fill a little bit as well. And then exhale in the opposite way. The chest relaxes and then the belly relaxes. And you can just imagine everything going down through uh, what we call K1. That's the bubbling well on the bottom of the foot. Everything is going out there. Energy is coming in, or however we want to imagine it, is coming in through the third eye. And we're getting close to what we would call the upper dantian. So when I breathe in, I'm breathing in energy here. My belly is expanding, and then above my belly expands, and then my chest expands. It's three chambers breathing. Okay. One hand over the lower dantian. One hand over the upper dantian. Elbows are not flared, but they're also not too tight. Check my buoyancy. Okay, pretty good. And then the breathing is difficult to do while I'm talking. So you can just imagine the breath coming in through the third eye. The belly fills. Go ahead and let the chest fill too, that's fine. But the muscles are still from the abdominal region. And then do it in reverse. Now, if you have just woken up or if somebody has just kind of pissed you off a little bit, feel free to do the exhale through like a, a pinhole, like you're, you're uh, maybe trying to breathe through a straw. So I'll demonstrate that. So I'm going to breathe in through the third eye. Belly fills first, then just above the belly, and then I can even feel my chest expand a little bit with the breath. And then when I breathe out, I'm gonna breathe out through a pinhole in my mouth. And when we add the imagination, you can imagine color, you can imagine light, you can imagine spirit, whatever you want, going in through the third eye, and then going down in the body and out through K1. Okay, questions or concerns? Any questions about standing in the golden line? This How is long? what is. What's the duration? Uh, there's no durations. Uh, durations are completely unimportant. Uh, set yourself up. Make sure that you are properly set and then just do as many breaths as feels, as feels natural. I personally do things in sevens, but it's not really important. Duration is, so you could do that at the stoplight. You could do that you know, right before you're about to leave. You could just do one breath and that will be beneficial because that establishes in, and, and again, my Chinese isn't, or my Mandarin isn't so great, but it's called Zong Ding or central equilibrium which is super important in Tai Chi, super important in movement of the human body is central equilibrium. I call it establishing the golden line. And Ida made a really nice painting. You can also switch the hands if you want. I do recommend that from time to time, just switching it up. I don't really get into the traditional Chinese medicine view of gentlemen with this hand, ladies with this hand, um, I just don't, I don't really put too much into that. It doesn't really matter which hand, but feel free to switch them up for balance purposes. Do you have any tricks of imagination for, to get that feeling that you're breathing in through your head? <laughs> Honestly, I just imagine the breath. I imagine it as if it air, like okay. literally air is coming in through my third eye and it could be air, it could be light, but I'm, seeing and feeling it as it comes in and then seeing and feeling it as it goes into the earth. Sometimes you can imagine like roots or imagine energy dissipating, but one way that you can look at it is you're taking in, and this, this is something you can say to yourself. This is something that will be really important as I start to emphasize the practice as Egong is that we want to talk the practice out. It's one of the reasons we love guided meditations is because somebody's guiding us. Guide yourself. You can guide your own practice. Talk it out. 
There's times where I'm walking to work and I'm like, Ernest, CV 17, CV 6, you're in alignment. So I talk my practice out to myself even today to remind myself of what I'm doing and to stay on track. It's perfectly fine. So when you're doing your practice, of course, if your mind is relaxed and you're just doing it, then don't force talking to yourself. But the moment you feel your mind is starting to wander to other things outside of your immediate bubble of perception, talk your practice back. So bring yourself back to the practice by talking it out. And so you can even say, I, I can feel the air coming in, clean. And this is kind of the traditional way of looking at it. And I think this is okay. Although you guys know this isn't how I view the laws of energy dynamics. But you can say that I feel fresh, clean, vibrant energy coming in through the third eye, nourishing my body in exchange for stagnant. So I'm letting the stagnant energy that isn't moving that well out of the body and into the earth. Does that make sense, Ida? Yep. If I imagine, yeah, if I imagine light and breath, I don't really imagine it as color. I just kind of imagine it more as white sparkly light, which is good too. I mean, good for me. You can imagine it with color, however you want to imagine it. But the idea is fresh in through the third eye and less fresh out of K1 on the bottom of the foot. And then that's our standing meditation. Three chambers breathing. The belly is still doing the work, but the belly fills. And you can feel the chest fill. And now I have just a full cylinder here. It's not just my belly. It's not just my chest. The chest didn't do any of the work because the belly is what is causing the chest to expand. And that's okay. That's going to get us closer to what we call whole body breathing. Would you do... I've been listening. Um, this is all such a new language. Your standing meditation, would you do it once? Do it? Just do it? I, I don't actually, know what I would be doing. Uh, formally, you can just do this. Yeah, so formally, this is your standing meditation. You can face a window. You can go outside and look at the sun. That, whatever it. you want to do. Yeah, that would be more of a formal way of doing it. But Jerry, I do this informally. Every time I go from standing to sitting, I check my balance, I check my posture, I do my little buoyancy chest to make sure my back is straight, and then I go about my day. So I actually do that standing golden line informally throughout the day many, 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 many times. Innumerable, like I do this so much. If I come to a stoplight, like I've been walking, I'm at a stoplight, I go from the ground up, my feet are parallel, I have the U shape, and I do my little bounce. Before I do Tai Chi, when I come up to do Tai Chi, I check my golden line, and then I go into my Wuji posture. But formally, you can do it in front of a window, you can do it outside, because if you do it as a, as a formal practice, you're setting time and space aside to do that. So it's something that, you know, like you said, you're at a stoplight, you take your stance. And yes your balance yep a few a few breaths and you continue walking you might be at Correct. your desk standing yes rigid. thank you absolutely but i also create a formal practice every morning uh to where first i do my uh golden line and then i'll go into like my zen Zhuang, or i'll go into other types of standing practices but standing meditation formally and informally is a part of this whole thing Qigong, Qigong, Tai Chi. yep uh, time on the standing meditation is gradual and builds. It yes. doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter. Right. It's did not. you do it? Yeah. Did you do it or did you not do it? Yeah. I that's know what the, you mean. That's, yeah. That's the most Some days, thing. It's like, I suppose it's like anything else. I have found some days I could stand for 10 minutes. Other mm -hmm. days, two minutes is very long. It's, and that's okay. Uh, the momentum will build if we're not getting down on ourselves, which is the reason that I don't recommend counting time anyway. And as long as we do it every day. And we're more likely to do it every day when we're not like, I must do this for 15 minutes, because then it starts to feel like force if we don't really want to do it. But yes, Ida, gradually you will be able to stand longer because when we start to do Zen Juan, slow squats, 
if we start to get into the gong fu aspect, which is muscle activation, then we're, we're really gonna start to engage the legs mostly. But the legs will engage, slow squats, wall squats, all kinds of things. Duck walks could even potentially come into it, but we really wanna strengthen the legs. The stronger our legs are, the more everything is supported and it can help to alleviate pain in the back and in the upper body because our legs are so strong. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, so that's what I have time for today. I'll go ahead and post this recording as soon as I get home because I'm uh, back to back to back to back all the way until 1 p.m. And then every Sunday, we'll just continue to add some things. Eventually though, once we have a few things, we'll just do it together and then it is more follow along, less instructional, but some of it is gonna be instructional as well so that we can add new things. And then this has been a little bit of review, obviously, 18 gates and establishing the golden line. All right, is this any a questions? Recording yes. that we, is this a recording that we don't have to sign into? We just go it, I'm gonna I'm just gonna upload it to YouTube publicly. So just like any of my other YouTube videos, you just go to YouTube and press play. Thank you, Ernest. Yep. Thank All you. right. And then yeah, I'll I'll see you guys again on Tuesday. And then so Tuesday is the continuation of the 20 essential topics. And then on Thursday is the open group study. All right. So I'll see you guys Tuesday if you can make it. I'll post this hopefully a Thank little you. bit later today. Uh, Thank but you. you're welcome. Thank you. I appreciate yep. it. All right. Yep. See you guys again soon. Bye. Bye.